It's finally happening. Come sail on the Disney Wish with us. We are here at Port Canaveral about to embark on the Disney Wish. We're doing a three-night cruise that includes Nassau and Castaway Key. When you are boarding a Disney cruise, make sure you have your documentation that you register with. In our cases, those were our passports, but there are some exceptions with birth certificates. You're going to want to look up and verify on the Disney website what counts as boarding documentation. Also, you're going to want to do online check-in as soon as you possibly can from your cruise. I like to register for the earliest spot possible. That way, you are some of the first people on the ship and you can explore before sail away. When you arrive at the port, you're going to want to have your luggage ready with the tags that have been sent to you. And then you're also going to want to have your carry-on. Inside your carry-on is going to want to be your documentation as well as any medicines you might need. Some people throw a swimsuit in there. And if you're an adult, 21 and older, bringing alcohol on board, it has to go in your carry-on. It cannot go in your checked baggage. In addition to your passport or other approved documentation, you are also going to need your port arrival form. It is going to be an email with a QR code. That is going to be your boarding pass onto the Disney Wish. Hey, Alan. Mm -hmm. I just noticed something, and I need to know if you think it's weird. What? If you look over this way, you'll notice that Donald is painted on the wall. Yes. And he's wearing oh, pants, yes, but pants. no shirt which is quite an opposite look. Because normally he has a shirt and no pants. And I'm I'm confused. How does he determine what outfits require no pants and what require no shirts? Why does he only want one piece of clothing at all times? <laughs> Listen, I get it. I'm a simple man, but I do <laughs> understand the value of having both pants and shirts. I like that they also made chest hair. Like they tuffed his fluff, uh, his chest, feathers out. Chest uh, feathers. Chest feathers. <laughs> I hope we get to see Donald, and I also hope he's wearing this outfit. Our boarding group number has been called, and we are about to step foot aboard the Disney Wish. I'm so excited! Here we go! <gasps> Please welcome aboard the McCormack family. Thank you. I feel so important. I feel so special. We just got on board the Wish and were greeted promptly by Cinderella and Prince Charming and also had our names announced, so I feel very important. But one thing that I want to observe right off the bat is just the beauty of the architecture of this space. It is gorgeous, not to mention the fact that immediately as you enter, there is concept art from it looks like Sleeping Beauty, Moana, Cinderella, uh, Princess and the Frog, all close to the 1923 restaurant location. And then I think what's most exciting for me, the big nerd, is there is pieces of the cruise ship itself from its early construction and iteration along with some of the original designs. So the balsa wood, the smaller scale ship that shows the different blocks it's put together. I, uh, we're gonna do a lot of exploring of this later, but it's beautiful. One thing I am quickly learning is that everything on this ship is art. It is one of the most beautiful ships I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, is that mini on the cart? It's little it is. Oh, Willie, the ship. Well, now that's just meta and cool. Oh my gosh. Everything is beautiful on this ship. It's crazy. It's gorgeous. I'm overwhelmed. Look how pretty the wallpaper is. It's crazy. The pumpkins and the slippers. Oh my gosh, everything on this ship is beautiful. We're headed up to the pool area, the top deck area to take some pictures, maybe find a beverage. Marceline Market is up here. Marceline Market is the like breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffet. Joyful Sweets is right here. This is the, he's crying candy. This is the ice cream shop. Look at Disgust, we'll be in with her later. Came out to explore the pool deck and how cute is the Toy Story Splash Zone? Oh my gosh, the little buzz and Party Source Rex, but he's called Slidosaurus Rex. This is so cute. I'm gonna do something unbecoming of myself and go in here since there are currently no children. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Look at the little peas. But most importantly, hi guys. Just got down from the pool deck. Molly's already bought a cup. <clears throat> Thank you, Vanna. It says Andy on the bottom. I needed it. 
That is what I call a necessary purchase. Uh, we are now going to go to Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods, which has a variety of stations and accoutrement. You have Mickey's Smokehouse Barbecue, Goofy's Grill. You have Donald's Cantina, Daisy's Pizza Shop, and Minnie's Ice Cream. I will be having all of these many times throughout our stay. I can't be tamed. The only disappointment that I have is that Goofy is the um, strung out version of himself. Which, what have they done to my boy? My poor boy. We have just picked up our first of what will be many halls of food. Uh, you might notice that we have fewer than normal chicken tenders. I have no apologies. We ate those in queue for the other foods. They were tasty. We started with four. Yeah, now we have two. We also picked up tacos, a burrito, mm -hmm. and a cheeseburger. And you will also notice a variety of spice accoutrement. These will also be tried. I love a ramekin filled with a spice. I'm excited. Let's dive in. I've heard good things about Donald's Cantina, so I grabbed a couple of tacos, a beef, and a chicken. They have all kinds of toppings. I went ham on the toppings and the hot sauce. Cheers. That is a good taco. I, this one's the beef. It's nice and moist. The tortillas taste homemade. I don't know if they are, but they've been warmed up, so they've got that nice moisture. That was the chili lime hot sauce. Gonna try the chili garlic as well. Tons of toppings. Trying the chicken one as well. This one I'm gonna dip into a little of the salsa verde. That's a good taco as well. The chicken was really delicious, spiced well. What I'm loving though the most is the hot sauce bar. That salsa wasn't very hot, but the chili lime actually had some heat. There was hot sauce we have in our fridge. I think by the end of this, we will have tried all the hot sauces. Is that the hot barbecue? That's nice. Also, obviously, had to get some of the legendary Disney Cruise Line chicken tenders. I don't know what makes them so good. They are just frozen chicken tenders, but there is something about Disney chicken tenders that are sublime. And the fact that there's all these sauces for it, amazing. Got a burger, got a burrito, double B's. Cheers. I would cheers to Goofy. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. That's a darn good burger. I mean, granted, you're getting a burger that's being made and mass produced, but it actually tastes like it's a pretty good quality. The vegetables are fresh. Tomatoes, nice. Lettuce is good. Pickles, crisp. This American cheese, not bad. And I'm sure with the hot barbecue, it's going to be even better. Key takeaways from that burger. It's not going to be a deluxe burger that you're going to get at a park, but it is better than any quick service burger you are going to get in a theme park. So remember that. That's nice. Now the burrito. I am the sauce boss. My burger disappeared. All right, first we go in clean, just burrito. The pork is a little dry, but that's okay. It has a ton of flavor, and I'm really surprised, in a good way, by the poblano cilantro rice that actually carries some flavor of the poblano pepper. Now it's not spicy, it is fruity, uh, because poblano peppers are mostly pretty fruity peppers. Gonna put a little bit of jalapeno hot sauce on there. Here we go. Now, the jalapeno hot sauce is not my favorite, but what I will tell you is that's just jalapenos that have been blended with a little bit of white vinegar and some salt. It is jalapeno hot sauce in its purest form, just based on taste, I can could, I could tell you that. Good burrito. Oh, why are the fajita veggies so good too? This. This is good. This feels right. Yeah. I put my drink in my boot. You there, know, there's a there's a context. cocktail in my boot. Cheers. Mm. Ooh, that's nice. We went to Currents Bar. I grabbed the Caribbean Mule, which is Caribbean rum, ginger beer, and topped with an IPA. They cannot serve you alcohol into souvenir Disney cups, but when I asked the cast member if I could put it in there, he said, "You can do whatever you want once I hand it to you." So I did. And I got a gin and tonic with my favorite gin, the botanist. Things are going well. Plastic up, cheers. Kick. Okay, so one of the best things about Disney cruises is that they play Disney music everywhere. Um, and I don't know if you can hear it, but I just walked out into the hall and it's Poor Unfortunate Souls. <sighs> 
Anyway, this ship is so cute. There are different themes throughout the ship. Uh, we are in a Sleeping Beauty section, and you can tell that by the different rug. It's got all the little woodland creatures, and the little plaque outside of our room is the owl. Um, downstairs in the lobby, they had the examples of rooms for Cinderella or Moana themed. Now this cruise is a little bit different because we didn't get our uh, key to the world cards until we were on the ship. They said they'd be here at 2 p.m. So we came at 2 p.m. They were in a little envelope right here. And now we are gonna do a little rapid fire room tour. Our luggage isn't here yet because um, all of the wonderful Bell Services cast are sending them to the different rooms. So I saw some people's luggage out, but ours isn't here yet, which is just a friendly reminder that if you would like to go into the swimming pool or you need anything, you want to make sure to have that in your carry-on baggage because you don't know when your luggage will actually arrive at your room. All right, rapid fire room tour. Here we go. I cannot guarantee that your room will come equipped with an Allen, but weirdly mine did. Right walking in, we've got a little closet right here with our life belts. Everybody up, get your life belts on. We've also got a safe here and a laundry bag, as well as another, ooh, robes! We're gonna luxuriate in these later. The first of the two bathroom areas, the royal throne room. You've got some soap, places to put your toiletries, thermostat for all the dads out there. And then you've got a secondary little bathroom area, and this one has the shower. I also love this little, little branded DCL soap. I thought they were getting rid of H2O, so I'm happy to see that still here. But I like that there's two different compartments so that way you can have two things going on. Mm -hmm. uh, he, oh my gosh, Dumbo's flying over the ship on the TV. Oh my God, that's so cute. The different staterooms all have different artwork. We are in a Tiana room and it is so beautiful with this portrait of Princess Tiana and Prince Devine and Louis and it's so cute. Um, there's a guy there, bed, reading lights, more Tiana artwork couch this can be made into a pull down if you had another person that was staying in your room with you little vanity section hello trying to avoid a camel toe in here you've got the hair dryer here's the true test of luxury on the disney wish you know that's not bad that's not bad and you know what it has a diffuser so i'll take it what i'm more interested in is this like mat to put your styling tools on that i can put my curling iron on that's nice little cabinet little interruption by the Second captain? Second lieutenant? Assistant captain? What was her title? Staff captain. Staff captain? That doesn't sound right. Uh, anyway, she was reminding us about the muster drill, which is the safety drill that every cruise ship has to do, thanks to the Titanic, where you learn where your life jacket station is and everything. Move one of those a little bit. Anyway, we also have a fridge right here, but it's like the weirdest fridge I've ever seen. As a friendly reminder, adults 21 and up can each bring on board two bottles of wine or champagne or six beers in your carry-ons, so recommend doing that if you are someone who likes to imbibe to have some less expensive drinks. We did get a veranda room. So here's our veranda with a beautiful view of Cape Canaveral. This will be much nicer tomorrow morning. We have coffee out here. We got a couple chairs, a table. I would definitely say this feels smaller than our room on the Dream, would you agree? Yeah. Feels a little smaller. The balcony's definitely smaller, which is just, Happenstance, sometimes you get one of the bigger balconies, sometimes you don't. The room, I can't tell. It feels a little smaller though than our room on the, on the Dream and we had the same class of room, but really pretty. And now we're gonna go continue to explore the ship before the mustard drill. As promised, we are back in the lobby to do a little bit of exploring. We already checked out the theaters and with every turn, one thing that I will say is that the Wish is filled with beautiful nods to old artwork that has been sort of unearthed seemingly from the archives and then recreated and dedicated here. And I want to go explore that a little bit. The lobby is very beautiful and Belle's here now. Cinderella was here when we arrived. And one of the cutest things they do on a Disney cruise is announce each family as they come on and it really feels special and magical. I want to talk about the light fixture for a moment. Alan and I watched this Nat Geo special about them building the wish last night before we got on board but it's absolutely stunning and if you watch it throughout the day little magic moments will happen and it'll light up and the ceiling will light up all different colors apparently when the clock strikes midnight every night it dazzles and dances so we'll definitely be back at midnight to check it out 
each of the Disney cruise ships has kind of a host character that is the theme of that one. This, of course, is the Disney Wish. And kind of your host character, if you will, is Cinderella. So you're going to see not only this beautiful Cinderella statue here in the lobby, as well as Lucifer. You're going to see little touches of Cinderella all over the place. If you look at the ornate detail in some of the ironwork on the balconies, you'll see pumpkins. The general theme of the Wish is very princess heavy, with Captain Minnie taking another sort of forefront role, which is incredible because you get to see that represented not only here in the lobby, but throughout every individual deck of the ship. Each deck is actually themed to different princesses. So you have Moana's representation, Princess and the Frog. As Molly mentioned, our deck is Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Snow White. It's really nice to see the princesses represented in a very unique and specific way. Here off the main lobby as well is 1923. This is one of the dining locations in the rotational dining. There's a Roy Disney room and a Walt Disney room. We will be dining here one night. One thing that has caught my eye for sure is all of this artwork that you have in these different cases. They worked with the Disney archives and the Disney animation studio to pull thousands of photos. Now, I don't think these are the originals, but they recreated these pieces for the Disney wish. So if you look in each of these cases, they feature a different princess. So here's Moana, you've got different concept arts for her, different animation cells. You've got the colors used in Moana, di different prop, like here's Moana's headdress and a copy of the Heart of the Ocean. And it's just, as a Disney animation nerd, as a Disney history nerd, definitely geeking out a little bit. I think my favorite of the cases though has to be the Cinderella one because it features concept art and paintings by Mary Blair, who was an incredible Disney animator and really known for her use of color. She made very unusual choices, especially for the time with color. It was actually said that she had pretty terrible eyesight, so she would use bright pops of color because she could see it. Yeah, as your resident color expert and also somebody who really loves bright pops of color because I see them so well, you will notice within these cases what is so stunning to me is the actual unique color blends that Disney animators created for those specific cartoons. It's just phenomenal to see them like, hey, these are those unique mixes. This is the formula of how we make them, and we're going to use these only for these animated features. Aside from the wonderful nod and inclusion of Disney princesses, what we also have here in the main lobby is a bit of reference art for the cruise ship itself. After watching the National Geographic special, it's amazing to see all of the time and effort that goes into creating a cruise ship prior to anybody even welding a joint. And specifically here you have the Grand Hall Scale model, which is 3D printed as someone who owns three 3D printers uh, for my various nerdy hobbies. It's really cool to see this represented here of how they've actually scaled out the interior of the ship, as well as little nods to the different features that you'll see throughout the ship itself. What do you got there? I'm really glad we're not staying in an Ursula room. <clears throat> I, um, I think that is the heart of Tafiti. You can't trust her, so I wouldn't be so sure. <clears throat> Anyway, and for even more neat nods to the actual ship itself, we see the concept for the stern where we have Rapunzel hanging in by her hair to paint with Pascal, which is so incredibly cool. I mean, think about it. Nobody, no guest is going to get that close to the stern where Rapunzel is hanging, but they put all that time and attention to make it as real as possible. And here, which is possibly one of the coolest things I've learned recently about how cruise ships are built, is the balsa wood ship model, which is a 1 400th scale. And it shows how individual blocks were actually laid on top of each other in layers and connected like a jigsaw puzzle to build this ship. So literally every single block was layered layer by layer, piece by piece, then measured within a millimeter to be welded shut and closed. That includes electrical, plumbing, the whole nine yards on the interior all has to be lined up perfectly and then welded together so that we can then be on this massive floating city. I am in awe. Like our friend Dr. Strange from the Mysteries of the Mystic Art Show says and demonstrates for us, math is the real magic. So cool. The two movie theaters on board are the Wonderland Theater and the Neverland Theater and they're stunningly gorgeous. I was obsessed with the doorknobs on the Wonderland Theater and that is a perk of being on The Wish. You can watch movies from, they've got Black Panther Wakanda Forever playing. They've got Avatar 2 playing, so seeing a movie, if you'd like to, you can do it, but at least go check out the detail in the theater because it's beautiful. So we just finished the muster drill, which is my favorite part of any cruise. You can thank Colonel Mustard for implementing this. The one and only. Colonel Mustard, did you know that? It's named after Colonel Mustard. Yep, that's factual. When you get on your... 
When you get on the cruise, check your stateroom card. It will have a letter. That letter indicates your gathering point for the muster drill. If you have confusion about where that location is, it is going to be on the back side of your stateroom door, or you can ask a helpful crew member and they will point you in the right direction for your muster drill. It's really boring, but you're required to go, so get there on time, be quiet when they tell you to be quiet, and everybody can get on with having some fun, which we're about to do, because we're about to sail away. All right, let's get to it. because no one's surprised but it was really adorable lots of characters and now we are back for round two at the festival of foods obviously we got another round of chicken tenders and some more sauces and then we also stopped at daisy's pizza for the prosciutto and arugula pizza what i thought was cool was that they had just plain cheese pizzas and then when you asked for something they dressed it for you so they like dressed the prosciutto and the arugula and the balsamic like to order Daisy knows what she's doing. Now, I personally don't love tomato sauce. I prefer a white pizza. And I think a white pizza would be better with the prosciutto and arugula, but it's pretty good pizza. The crust is thin crust. The cheese is nice. The tomato ha sauce has that natural sweetness, saltiness from the ham. Alan's already eaten his whole piece in the time that I've been talking about this. I don't know that the <laughs> I don't know that the pizza will be my favorite spot compared to the cantina and the grill. Uh, and I've yet to try the smokestack, but if you want pretty decent quick pizza, Daisy knows what's up. One of the best tips that I can provide on a Disney cruise is that they do provide unlimited soft drinks, sodas, teas, and coffees, and hot chocolates. So I recommend bringing a cup of your choosing. It doesn't have to have a mammoth on it, but if it does, that makes it extra cool. And use that. And fill that up repeatedly throughout your stay instead of having to get the cups that they provide throughout the cruise. And someone has found soft serve nice the plan is as follows we are going to go change into our cruise casual now that's not my notation that is the disney which is notation of our dress code so we're going to change it to cruise casual go grab a libation and then prepare for our uh, evening meal related i don't know what disney cruise line does to their soft serve but it is so good it's kind of like the chicken tenders. It's just extra good because you're on the Disney cruise. You're on the open sea. Mm -hmm. Way to tackle it, champ. Yep. We'll see you in a second. As mentioned previously, each floor and deck of the Wish is themed to a different IP, most notably our princesses. However, here on deck four, it is themed to Peter Pan, which is appropriate because on this floor is Hooks Barbary, which is a barber shop, but also a place where one might find whiskeys, bourbons, and rums. Almost like a bit of an old-fashioned bar. And our next stop, hidden throughout of Hook's Barbary, are a variety of references to Peter Pan. Throughout the entirety of this case here, you have a number of clocks, but you also have a crocodile, which represents TikTok croc. These glasses look to be very similar to our pal Mr. Smee's glasses. If we continue to scan through, you have the spyglass that Hook likes to utilize as well as a number of references to a lot of the different shaves that Hook was about to receive. And if we continue this direction, we see the seagull that was sat upon Hook's face as Mr. Smee shaved him, which ended up shaving the derriere of the seagull rather than Hook's rather stubble-filled face. That is what's left of it. <laughs> Coming all the way up top, we also have a mermaid that references Mermaid Lagoon and this lantern here. I hope that looks familiar to you. It certainly looks familiar to Tinkerbell because that's where she was captured by Captain Hook. 
when he went on to attempt to use her to betray Peter Pan. Not only do you have all of these references to a lot of things in Peter Pan, you also have Captain Hook's hook, as well as the Jolly Roger as a ship in the bottle, which is just incredible. You also have the option to purchase a pour of a very particular spirit that you could find here within Hook's Barbary. If you do purchase those pours, you will get a collectible coin that goes with it as well. And Molly's taking a look through the menu right now. Now, the least expensive one we've seen is around $21, or the most expensive being $750, which is for a very exclusive wish only whiskey. Now, for the connoisseur in your life, this might be something to try. But remember, the prices do range, and most of them sit in the triple figures. So just be aware of that. As is tradition, we have gotten two old fashions. Molly has gone with a bourbon. She specifically went with Woodford Reserve. It is a smoked bourbon that has used a double cask syrup style syrup inside. Whereas mine is a rye old fashioned, again, as is tradition, a little bit spicier that has a smoked spiced syrup. Um, it is always incredible to me how a cocktail that is seemingly the same and classic can taste wildly different. That is a fantastic old fashioned. She smoked it with the coolest machine I've ever seen and she used a little apple wood chips to smoke it. And she also said she used a maple syrup that had been aged in bourbon barrels to be that little hint of sweetness that you might expect from an old fashioned. And it is fantastic. But overall, I just think it is so cool that they don't advertise this as a bourbon bar or anything, but it is. You just kind of have to know that you can come in here and get cocktails. And I, it's like night one of the ship. I don't know if I'm gonna get a better cocktail on this cruise. Cheers. Uh, it's very spicy. It's pretty delicate, actually. It's very light. You can taste the smoky spiciness of the rye. That is enhanced by the syrup. It's a stellar cocktail. If you are a bourbon drinker and you decide to come on The Wish, if you don't come here, you're doing yourself a disservice. Period. End of story. Now I'm going to enjoy this. Taking our cocktails, hello Peter Pan, past the Neverland movie theater here into the Walt Disney Theater. This is where the live stage productions are held each night. Tonight we are seeing a Disney Wish original called Disney Sees the Adventure. Super excited, but you can't film inside these shows, so we'll see you in a little bit. Oh, well. Every Disney cruise has one original show where they just throw a ton of characters at you. And I, and I cry in every one of them. That's true. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. That was nice. Yeah. By the way, unplanned Didn't everybody. plan that. The spoilers still apply. There is a section of this where Hercules appears, and he is my favorite character, bar none, which sent me for a loop. I'm going to do it now, and I'm not going to do it. But anyway, it was incredible. I was a little mad. I'm not going to lie to you, friends. I'm not going to lie to you. When the show first started, the first musical number was oh. Go With The Flow oh, yeah. from Finding Nemo yeah. The Musical, one of my yeah. least favorite things in Walt Disney World, and I was mad. Featuring unhappy Molly. I was un I was upset, personally, but then Did it you was. feel victimized? <laughs> yeah. I stopped being upset, though, because the next number was a musical mashup between Moana, Merida, and Elsa. And Elsa was black, and it was awesome. And they were all amazing. And it made me feel my feels to see three beautiful, strong ladies just absolutely crushing it. And it was followed by an act with Tiana who absolutely slayed in every way she She was performed. amazing. Um, Her best voice. Best performance I've seen outside of like the animated feature. She had some pipes. <sighs> the whole show is about following your dreams and making your wish come true. And I'm unwell. So anyway, see the shows. They're really good. Um, it's Disney, obviously, so they're good. And anyway, um, we're going to go do some trivia now before dinner. Yeah, because we need to crush people into the ground after feeling our emotions. Yes. Skull, everyone. Next up, we're headed to Keg and Compass for a little bit of Pixar trivia. That is 18 plus, presented by Nosemore. It is a Viking-themed lounge, bar, both on The Wish. And I think the coolest feature of it is not only the fact that you have many different Viking-themed elements throughout the bar itself, but the roof is a map that contains a variety of different locations and near those locations are the region appropriate Disney characters. But we're here to crush a Pixar trivia. I'm obsessed with this bar, except for one it's tiny problem. Well, we got second in Pixar trivia, and now we are headed to our first dinner on board the Disney Wish. Now, the Disney Wish, like all of the Disney ships, does rotational dining, where they assign you one of the dining rooms every night for dinner. There are three unique experiences. If you don't want to do any of these experiences, you could just go to Marsley Market, which is a buffet option. You could go to Mickey's Festival Foods, the quick service option. Or if you're an adult, you could do an upgrade charge to go to Palo or Enchante, which is, again, an additional cost, and 
when you would want to get a reservation for those meals. We, however, are headed to Worlds of Marvel. This is the Avengers Quantum Encounter. This is an interactive dinner experience because Ant-Man has brought some quantum cores aboard the Disney Wish to demonstrate how fascinating the technology could be. I'm just excited because I'm sure nothing will go wrong. I'm looking at this amazing wall panel with Black Panther and Iron Man and Ant-Man and Black Widow. Who's on the other side? It's got Ant-Man and Spider-Man and Captain Marvel and Captain America. These are very, very cool. And I'm so glad the Marvel Universe is at sea. Can't wait for the meal. Now as a courtesy to our fellow guests on The Wish who are also trying to enjoy this interactive dinner experience, we're not going to record any reviews in real time. We're going to record our food and do some voiceovers later and record what happened. So spoiler alert as well if you're coming on The Wish, but I'm ready to see some supers. One thing about dining on the Disney Cruise Line is that you will have the same table number every night and the same servers every night when you visit the main restaurants. You also have the possibility of some table mates if you're a smaller party. For us, for example, we were seated with two other couples. When you arrive at Worlds of Marvel, you will notice that you have a quantum core on your table that Ant-Man will tell you to interact with throughout the evening. There are plenty of screens throughout the restaurant, so everyone should have a good view to watch the show play out. It stars Ant-Man, the Wasp, along with some other of your favorite Marvel characters. These are quantum cores, cutting-edge technology that for the first time allows us to specifically target our pim particles to shrink or grow just about anything. Please don't give any crumbs up. When we give you the direction, <laughs> you push the buttons on your cores and may send a signal to the regulator here, which in turn remotely targets an object to shrimp or crow. Easy, right? I'll show you. Let's shrink something already. Like this? I made this. It's a swan. Adorable that you think you made a swan. Yeah. Are you ready? In three, two, one, activate. One of my favorite details of the restaurant were the play settings. Look how cool these Avengers A plates are, but even better are the silverware. I love the little A engraved in the forks and knives. I really hope people don't steal these because then they'll have to get rid of them, but maybe people don't steal them because they're afraid the Avengers will come after them if they do. The menu itself at Worlds of Marvel represents a variety of locations found across the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There are things like showcase apps with bao buns and hearts of palm. You have Wakandan salads, which includes like an iceberg wedge or the Sokovian potato soup. You have entrees a symbol with a chicken schnitzel and a grilled tuna steak. And you also have things like lighter notes, which includes lamb shawarma salad or a grilled grain fried sirloin steak. Each of the restaurants has a signature bread service at Marvel. It's a marble loaf. Feel like they missed a pun opportunity there with red bell pepper dipping sauce. This was quite good. The red pepper dipping sauce was tasty. It had a little bit of a zing to it. It was kind of like the consistency of salad dressing, but the flavor of hummus, which may be a little confusing for some, but overall, not a bad way to start the meal. Now's the time where I remind you that Disney Cruise Line is all you care to enjoy. So if there's more than one item you'd like to sample across the menu, go for it. We each got two apps. I started with a soup from the Sokovian Kettle, the white cheddar and broccolini soup. It was fine white cheddar and broccoli soup, nothing super unique, but it wasn't overly salted. It was pretty cheesy. However, the best part were certainly those cornbread croutons. And I picked up the steamed bao buns, that is seared ginger orange pork belly, toasted sesame seeds, pickled daikon, which is a radish, spring onions, and then a mirin soy honey glaze. The bao was tasty, but it did need a bit of a bite to the sauce to help it along with the cilantro. The radish, which is the daikon, helped add some freshness to the pork belly, which was actually cooked very, very well and pretty darn tender. For my second starter, I went with one of the Wakandan salads, the Iceberg Wedge. It came with candied pecans, smoked bacon lardons, black and globe radish, and Maytag blue cheese. It was a very good wedge salad. I love a wedge. The candied pecans and the smoked bacon were my favorite part. I also enjoyed the blue cheese dressing. Again, nothing super unique, but very tasty. Okay, everybody, I'm going to try to read this one right off the menu because I got the kartoffel soup. Please don't be mad at me because I butchered that. Please don't be mad. Honestly, Wanda Maximoff being angry with me is literally one of the most terrifying things that could happen. So yes, Wanda. It is a creamed potato soup with carrots, celery, knockwurst, and thyme. I will tell you that this is a very hearty soup and it comes with a pretty large serving. It is 
fairly bland. It could just use a little bit more salt and pepper, but what does come in with a burst of flavor is the knockwurst, which is a sausage, and it is a delightful little find in the soup that you get every once in a while. Helen, what's your favorite? For my entree, I got the Bear Beret Spiced Pork Chop with pecan and vegetable pilau, pomegranate, red pepper sauce, rainbow shard, and roasted scallion. Let's start with the good thing about this dish. The spice on the exterior of the pork chop was wonderful and probably would have been better on almost any other entree because the pork chop itself was thick and very dry. I'm gonna be honest with you folks, I would recommend getting any other entree on this menu just because this one I think misses the mark a little bit and there are other better things for you to grab. I once again opted for two choices this course, starting with the rosemary roasted beef tenderloin, carved and served with celery yak puree, crisp parsnip, buttered asparagus, roasted shallot, and a truffle cabernet jus. It's a good thing I ordered two entrees because Alan ate the majority of this beef tenderloin. It was a very decent cut of beef. It was decent quality. I think the things I liked the best about it were that truffle cabernet wine sauce. I love both wine and there was a strong truffle flavor. I also enjoyed the little crispiness of the parsnip atop the puree and the asparagus was fine. It certainly wasn't the best steak I had aboard the Wish, but it was good. Also couldn't resist trying one of the vegetarian dishes. This was the ricotta gnocchi with fontina cheese, caramelized grape tomato confit, broccoli rabe, and arugula pesto. I actually really enjoyed this. It was very, very cheesy. It was cooked well. The, the gnocchi was fluffy and it wasn't hard. The arugula broke up the richness of the cheese with a nice earthy flavor. It wasn't, again, anything that's going to knock your socks off or be super memorable, but it was very, very solid. And I think for your pickier eaters, this is a great choice. Hope we stepped out for some fresh air. How about we surprise her and shrink my terrifying swan back to normal size before she gets back? Huh? Friday. Boot up the cores. Target acquired. Quantum cores are online. Three, two, one. Uh, that didn't. Were you playing with the radio again? Uh, I just wanted to surprise you. Oh, you did, honey. You shrunk the ship. Uh, uh, Quantum cores are back online. Right. Activate your buttons now. Let's take a look at the dessert menu. You've got a variety of sweets, of course, all themed to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've got things like the Pim Donut Sunday. Obviously wasn't going to get that. You've got a Torta Layered Cake, Classic Ice Cream Sunday, as well as a Sticky Date Pudding. But we didn't go for any of those. For my dessert, I picked up the Quantum Key Lime Pie. This had key lime curd, raspberry gel, and a whipped lime ganache. I will tell you that for your key lime pie lovers, this is going to be right up your alley. Now granted, it was not the best key lime pie I've ever had, but it was solid. This is going to be something that you're not going to be disappointed ordering, especially if you like that flavor profile. It was tart with a slight hint of sweet and just a good standard key lime pie. I opted for the signature dessert, the Cheesecake Bite. This was a cheesecake topped with fresh berries, strawberry jelly, and whipped cream. Personally, I wish it had more of the fresh berries. That was my favorite part, but it's a pretty standard and very solid cheesecake. I also enjoyed the little touch of the white chocolate garnishes on top. Again, overall, much like the key lime pie, if you like cheesecake, you're going to enjoy this, but it's not going to be the most unique dish at the meal. Is that Captain America? Sam? Captain Falcon? <laughs> Captain, what do I call you now? Sam works. Call me Captain. How's your cushy cruise gig going? Try the chicken tenders. They would no change your life. <laughs> Target acquired. Oh, well, we saved the planet. I think Captain Marvel saved the planet. Again? Yeah, she's pretty bad. She is. Nope, give us that. She can't a, say that. It's a family friendly channel. We, we can. She's really cool and neat. She's kick butt. Now, as a Marvel fan, I quite enjoyed the worlds of Marvel. I loved the cameos from different characters like Miss Marvel and Sam and Captain Marvel. I loved that in between the kind of story plotline sections there were graphics about different tech the avengers had like mjolnir and stormbreaker and cap shield and all these different things i'm sorry the ship is rocking so yeah by the way like... folks we are we are swaying <laughs> with the ship right now we are 
motoring. <laughs> Dramamine. It'll be your friend. The non-drowsy kind, otherwise you can't drink. Effectively a ginger chew. Yeah, it helps. I will say, if you're not a huge Marvel person, it could be a little lost on you. The food was good, but not amazing. So if you're not a Marvel fan and you're maybe considering a Palo or an Enchante night, maybe consider doing it during the Marvel dinner, because I don't think you're going to miss the experience that much. And then there was a little cameo with Spider-Man at the end that I wasn't expecting, which yeah. was kind of fun. That was very cool. I also think that the plot of it all and the show of it all was actually really unique. You're not going to get that on any of the other ships. So it makes for a very unique dining experience uh, that I think is well outside the norm of most other cruises. And that in and of itself was fun. Post dinner, we are headed back towards the lobby to see a special someone who I've been waiting a very long time to meet. I've been waiting my whole life to meet you. Yeah, that commercial from when I was a kid, it's basically happening right now. I've been waiting my whole life to meet you. We met Captain Minnie. She's stunning. We adore. We stand. Yeah. If you didn't know, Captain Minnie sails this ship. Captain Mickey is in charge of the rest of the fleet, but Captain Minnie is in charge here. And it's the first time Minnie Mouse has ever worn pants. And she is stunning and amazing. And she literally brings a tear to my eye because it's just so cool that they finally put Minnie in charge. No shade to Mickey because I still love Mickey, obviously. But it's nice to see Minnie in charge, too. And she's adorable. As a little pro tip, there are tons of characters on the Disney Cruise Line. If you want to know when and where to meet your favorites, make sure you have the app all set up and you can see in the app where every character will be and at what time. You can favorite things in the app. Yes. You can add things to your plans so that way you say, okay, I want to meet Minnie. Here's the time she's going to be out. Here's the time Goofy, Captain Jack, Donald, whoever it is. You can favorite them and then that way you have them all ready to go in your plans. Okay, we've met Minnie. Yes. What's next on the dock? It's getting late. We should shop for Minnie ears. Naturally. Yeah, a natural progression. That's what we'll call it. Now, I was going to talk about all of the great merchandise locations here on The Wish, like Treasures Untold or Mickey's Mainsail, but it would be a crime to not acknowledge how much this live band slaps. They are incredible. The lead singer. The lead singers are amazing. Their vocals are incredible. We've even had a tap dancing number. This is my vibe. And uh, Mulligan shot, but I'll be here. Mickey's Main Sale is one of the many merchandise locations here on the Disney Wish. Now, here you can find a lot of collections that are unique to the Wish, including some things like ears. And I imagine at this point we're searching for the perfect pair, if I had to guess. Say okay, inaugural sailing on the back, say Disney Wish on the side. And the inaugural sailings collection is one that is very unique to the Wish and also exists in a lot of other clothing, like shirts, hoodies, pullovers, etc. But we have ears. Surprise, we changed. <laughs> Astute. You know what's not comfortable? Heels. You know what? That is true very uncomfy. You get it. You were wearing heels too. That's what that's what you guys couldn't see. Alan, Alan is who I'm talking about, not me. Yeah. I had on flats this whole time. Yeah, the only reason I'm this tall is that off camera I'm consistently in heels. Uh, if I'm lucky, wedges. So. I'm sorry. I got distracted. How beautiful the lobby looks right now. It's all lit up. It is pretty. While we show you how beautiful the lobby is and you just take it in for a moment, I'm going to tell you about our plans. We changed post dinner. My legs are free, so I can do some cool kicks. Did you do cool kicks? <laughs> I should audition to be a chimney sweep. You went for a chimney sweep? You could have said like martial artist or like karate yeah, role. Cool, chimney sweep. <laughs> and then decided to do a little bit of a walkabout art tour of the Disney Wish because at every single turn there is beautiful artwork waiting to be viewed. And for Disney enthusiasts and nerds like us, that is a dream come true. And now we are headed for a nightcap. Where, you may ask? Excellent question. The jury is out, and we are on an adventure to try to find it. An adventure is out there. Kaka! Growl. And now we enter the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge. The green button. Oh my god. Ahem. <clears throat> 
All right, well, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge is a Star Wars-themed bar that until 9 p.m. even your younglings can come and visit. After that, it becomes an adult-only locale and serves a number of libations ranging from cocktails to beers to wines, a lot of which are specialty just this location. It is incredibly well-themed and immersive to the Star Wars universe, and as somebody who loves Star Wars deeply, I'm geeking out, man! What's cool about the cocktail menu is they're all named after different places in Star Wars, I'm led to believe, yes? Coruscant is the one I got. It's called the Chancellor, and the bartender described it as like a sidecar, but with cognac. He put this cool bubble on it, which is why I got it. Oh, that's really good. It's definitely light, which is what I wanted. You know, it's been a long day. I didn't want like a super heavy, super alcohol forward drink, and this isn't, um, but it's still not sweet. It's got a little bit of tartness. You can taste the cognac, but it's not offensive. That's really good, and the bubble was really fun. What you looking at? Star Destroyers. Is that a Star Destroyer? Yeah. Is that a Star Destroyer? No, that's a Republic ship. Where are the good guys? Whoa! Well, we'll find out soon we're going to hyperspace. Found him. These are the good guys. Where are we? Um, that's a desert planet. If I had a guess, it'd probably Tatooine. But we're in an entirely different sector than we would be previously, which makes sense. We jumped to hyperspace. I'm 99% sure that this bar is based on the bar in the other cruise ships that takes you around the world, like the actual world. That makes the sense. The Skyline Lounge, and it takes you to like Paris and Rio and New York. That makes sense. But now we're going to different Star Wars places. Very, very cool. Very cool. I got the Tatooine, which is the Freetown Reserve. It is described as a Manhattan-esque drink. It is a Woodford Double Barrel Reserve. The ice in this is actually shaped to be a stormtrooper's helmet, which is very cool. And the goblet itself is not small. There's a slight sweetness to that, but not overt. You can still taste the bourbon. And since it is double, it's like it's double cask, it's a very pungent bourbon taste, but without any of the bite. It's a really good introductory cocktail to whiskey. Um, I'm gonna puzzle over what goes in this for a while, but it's very tasty. According to the bartender, we've made it to Coruscant. And Alan, why didn't you ever tell me about the crossover event of the century? You're telling me that is not Thanos' ship from Infinity War? So I'm pretty sure it is. And now I'm mad that the Jedis did not come save Spider-Man and Iron Man and Doctor Strange when they were trapped up there. Okay, everybody, buckle up. It's time for Star Wars Nerd Moments. The Hyperspace Lounge is modeled after Caden Voss's ship from Solo, as noted by the gold rings that you see around the bar itself. It is meant to represent the wealthier portions of the galaxy, serving patrons who are a little bit more affluent than you'd find at Oga's Cantina or, or other more what they'd refer to as, quote, pedestrian, unquote, locations. In all these glass cases around the room, you have things like the Hawk Bat, which is found in places that are strong in the dark side of the Force on Coruscant. You also have Mustafar Lava Crystals, a ship diagnostic scanner, which projects different models of ship that rotates through those throughout the time that you find yourself in the bar. You also have the Togruton Bust, as seen in The Mandalorian, as well as a guitar question mark like device that is used on the Halcyon also known as the Galactic Star Cruiser and not only that while you are spending time here in the hyperspace lounge you'll be navigating to many many different spots in the galaxy including Batu, Endor, Tatooine, Coruscant and Mustafar to name a few where you will encounter a variety of different ships so if you're a Star Wars nerd like me you might just be in heaven. As a side note, it's at times like these that I recognize the depths of my nerdiness. I have no regrets. Also, as a side note, if I pronounced any of those things incorrectly, you have my sincerest apologies. Uh, I just tried to pronounce things phonetically, and sometimes that's wrong. 
but I appreciate your patience. Wrapped up at the Hyperspace Lounge, I already cannot wait to go back. Not because I'm a diehard Star Wars fan, but because we noticed they had some craft Star Wars brews that you can't get anywhere else, and that includes Galaxy's Edge, so obviously we would back to try those. Now we're headed to the lobby because we were told that at midnight, something magical happens here. It is a Cinderella-themed ship after all, and we've got just a few minutes to go, which I think will be the perfect way to say goodnight on our first day aboard the Wish. So listen, you know, it's a lot of fun and games here, but there are some times where things happen that are inexplicable. This is one of those times. It's easier if I just show you. And here we have the Influencer. Lying on the ground, taking what I refer to as social video, which will ultimately be posted to the Instagram stories, capturing the joy of the Cinderella chandelier, while also dodging the movement of small children, seemingly those between the age ranges of 8 and 14 years old, an adolescence. This is a strange dance that occurs at the horizontal space as opposed to vertical, which most normal people would do. Frankly, it's a bit odd. But as we wait for the evening's kiss goodnight from the ship itself, this is where the influencer finds herself waiting. Truly a fascinating thing. Oh, look, she's noticed us. Interesting. She's referring to the pack mentality. What a strange thing. Interestingly enough, the other people of the pack do not do these interesting movements. This is just her. I wonder if it's intended to set herself apart from the crowd. Oh, it's a dance. Well, I was wrong. Truly a spectacular kiss goodnight. That was so lovely. It played so this is love from Cinderella and the chandelier changed colors and all the lights flickered and glowed. It was really pretty. It also had some great quotes from the film to sort of round it. Oh, it's midnight. There. And it is. <laughs> and I wasn't the only person laying on the floor. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the influencer had found her pack. <laughs> <An influencer. laughs> well, folks. I think that's where we're going to go ahead and end our first day here on the Disney Wish. It has been a jam-packed day. What was your favorite thing today? Uh, oh, A lot gosh. to choose from. There's so much to choose from. I have to say, uh, you know, up until we went to the Hyperspace Lounge, it was kind of a toss-up between uh, Seize the Adventure, that show, and I want to say just honestly getting on the ship and seeing the, the Wish for the first time. But after going to the Hyperspace Lounge, I think that might take the cake for day one just because of a beloved fandom. What about you? I mean, obviously just being on the Wish. I've been waiting for a long time to come on the Wish. It feels amazing to actually be on the ship. It would feel lame to say the Festival of Foods, even though I <laughs> very much enjoyed our feasting there. Yeah, the sauce competition upcoming. I honestly think just being on the ship. The show was great. I thought the Marvel dinner was really fun, but just being on the ship and exploring every nook and cranny and seeing what kind of artwork you can find, actually ignore all that. It was the old fashioned from Hooks Barbary. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Had a great first day aboard the Disney Wish. Let us know what your favorite thing is about Disney cruises. We have more videos coming from our other days aboard the ship. And I can't wait to get back to our room to see what kind of towel creature is waiting. Ooh, fair point. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like and subscribe if you are new and follow us on all of our socials. We appreciate you. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so very magical. Good night. It really has. Good night, everybody. <laughs> what you looking at? Lucifer has the cup because he's trying to catch Jacques and Gus Gus. I didn't notice that before. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Oh, this is so cute. It's the little things.